Hey guys, Corey Adamson from Realmark back again. I was just flicking through the comments of some of my old videos, the one where I sold a property for nearly $2 million, actually, and there was a comment on there that kind of piqued my interest. Somebody commented, when first starting out in real estate, should they try to go for the big properties or start off with the smaller, more inexpensive properties and how would they go about building trust with owners, being somebody that's new to the industry? So in today's video, same thing as last week, I'm just walking around my home opens. When I get a break, I'll have a chat to you guys and I'll let you know my thoughts and opinions. So if I was to give out some direct advice going off what, I would, uh, what I've learned, I would just say, go for the biggest properties you can. Yeah, you might not get them straight away, you might have to build up, but I don't think basing yourself in the lower end of the market is a great move to start off with. Unless you're willing to pull on volume, really commit yourself, you're gonna you know, absolutely destroy your weekends. And that is anyway, I mean it's Saturday, I'm still working here. But the, the amount of houses you have to sell is obviously significantly more than if you're getting your higher end properties. So I'll put it this way, my very first house that I ever listed was a little one in Atwell. I listed that seven months ago and I've sold that last week. So seven months that took me to sell that property and I ended up selling it for $490,000. So I'll, I'll go through the calculations here and show you how hard I've had to work to get that thing sold. I've been opening that twice, sometimes three times a week for seven months and I'll show you the return on that property. And then I'll compare that to another property that you know we had, I sold it for $1.5 million um, off market actually, as I said in that last video. And I'll show you how quick that was. We sold that in 14 days and the payment from that. So it's all about weighing it up. If you're somebody that has a kind of niche in the market and you can flick these $500,000 properties off left, right and center within a week, do it. Well, there's a lady in our office um, right now, she gets properties, you know, under 700,000 and she sells them within five days and just turns them over and that's really good. I haven't had that luck in my lower priced properties, still work them as hard as I can, except they tend to stick around for a little bit longer. Um, yeah, it, it's just the way the market is right now. But I'll show you some calculations first on the property in Atwell and then second on the property um, in Wembley and just kind of show you how different it can be just having a higher priced property. So for that $490,000 property that I sold, so $490,000, I charged 2.2% commission for that, so 97.8%. So $10,780, that's the total commission that I could earn from that. Obviously we split that with the company. The company I get 60% of that, so minus 40% equals the $6,468 commission, which doesn't sound too bad. You know, I'm not saying that uh, $6,468 is not great, it's not a good amount of money, but when you put it this way, so, so with the seven months it took, around about 30 weeks, so out of that, so 30 weeks, I, was making, I made $215 a week for that work. Now, this is the part that I really want to portray. It doesn't matter if you're at the property for a day, a week, seven months, seven years, you're still doing the same amount of work. So as Even a if a listing you know, is stagnant, it's sitting there for a while, we never hang our hat on that. We're still opening it, we're still calling people, we're still putting in as much work as it is the first day we're there. Yeah, the, the goalposts seem to get moved further and further away, but it doesn't mean we're working less hard. So that's why you want listings that you can turn over quickly, and sometimes the higher priced properties, they can sit on the market as well, but usually, if you're out there for seven months, if you get you know stuck in a property for seven months, and you can get a better return out of it, it just makes it a little bit easier to help motivate you. Nothing to do with the sellers, this is completely just analytical, you know, human nature. We're still talking to the buyers, we're still talking to the sellers the same way, but you know, everyone loves money, it's just true. It's one of the reasons why we work seven days, and it just makes it easier. So now we'll go through the calculations of a property that we sold in 14 days in Wembley for 1.5 million. So we sold that property for 1.5 million dollars, and then same thing, the 2.2%, so minus 97.8%. Equals, so it's $33,000 total, and then minus their 40% for the agency. $19,800, and then that was in two weeks, so divided by two, equals $9,900 per week, which is obviously a great return. Really motivating, you know, you've got all these people through, 
you know that money's right there. And then you can move on to the next one. Everyone's happier that way. The buyer's happier, the seller's happier, obviously the agent's happier um, in our line of work. No one cares about the agent. Obviously, we're not here to make ourselves happy um, you know, in the terms of that. Obviously, it's our career. But as long as our buyers and sellers are happy, it's just a much better relationship. And if you can sell a property for good money, sell it quick, you know, they're gonna be much happier than if you're gonna be sitting in, in their property for seven months. And at the end of the day, we get paid quicker. So after that settles, once again, you don't get paid until it settles. But knowing that that money's coming in, and that one was a 30-day settlement, so from the day that, that that property was sold, we knew we were getting paid in 30 days that full amount there. And that, that's why I like to say, you know, go for your bigger properties. Don't get stuck with your smaller properties. Um, and that leads me to my next part. So now the other side of that coin is in Perth especially, where I'm from, I think most of Australia. The market right now for premium properties is a little bit smaller than it would be you know, for your first home buyers or the second type of property. Um, premium houses, they can sit on the market for a while. The comment that I got that I'm referring to in this video was on a property, 30 Queens Cliff Road in Doubleview. That one, even though we sold it for 1,920,000, it took, you know, 280 days to sell. Um, in that time, we had offers above that. We actually had it under offer for $2,020,000, but the banks didn't value it at that, or they valued the property at that, but they couldn't get the finance for the buyer at that, which ended up making the offer fall through. And that's something that happens quite a bit now, um, especially in Perth, where I'm from. As I said, I think most of Australia, I'm not too sure about other countries, but bank valuations aren't stacking up to offers, um, contracts are falling through and it's making it really hard to sell premium properties. So with that being said, I know it sounds a bit confusing right now, the best strategy, I think, is to have your top end properties. You know, you wanna hold four, five, six top end properties that you can open, you know you've got big commissions coming in, you know, hopefully they'll move quick, but if they don't, there's still gonna be that money, you're still gonna be earning good money, even if it takes seven months to sell. And then you want your kind of lower properties, the ones that you know you can flick through. So the lady in my office, she specializes in the lower end. Our lower end, if we get good properties in the lower end, you know, five to $700,000, as funny as that sounds to say, lower end, I mean, my first house was in the sixes, um, and it just seems to be the way it is in Australia right now. Houses are getting more expensive, even though apparently the market is bad. Um, but anyways, I digress. If you can get those properties in the you know, $500,000, $600,000 and you know they're gonna sell, they're the ones, they're, they're the bread and butter that just keeps the motor churning, they just keep it going through. So, you know, if you can sell one of those a week, that's, uh, that's really good, even though the commission isn't as big as it was, but you know, that, that four or $5,000, that's what ends up paying the bills and the big properties come in, I guess, to save you and that's what elevates your lifestyle, essentially. Um, so having a really good mix of those two types of properties, I just don't see a downside in it. Yeah, when you've got a lot of stock, you have to do a lot of home opens, you have to do you know, a lot of this, a lot of that, but that's the game we're in, seven days a week. If you're not working seven days, then you know, you're probably not going to be in real estate. And when you are working seven days, it's not like a nine to five job. You'll be working around the clock to get those things sold. So, you know, commission's commission. It doesn't matter, all money folds the same way. And it just makes it a lot easier when there's more money. But hey, three, three, five hundred thousand dollar properties, if you can sell them all in the one week, it equals that one one point five million dollar property. So it's a, it's a bit of a confusing situation. But getting back to the original premise of this uh, of this video, I don't think you should limit yourself. Either way, if you want to go higher end, try getting the higher end, but just know until you get there, you're gonna need some of the lower end properties just to get an income, sustain your lifestyle. If you want to go higher end though, don't just focus on the lower end properties. There we go, so I've got someone coming through, I'll be back. The second part to that question was how do you build relationships with clients, and especially clients in your higher end properties. And the biggest thing with me, so I came into this with absolutely no experience. I was an ex-professional athlete, never sold anything in my life. After being a professional athlete, I worked in a gym. So, you know, you wouldn't think I would be selling houses, especially not, you know, million, multi-million dollar properties. And the biggest one for me was just being a good person. 
So I'm sure these these people in, in you know your expensive properties, even in your not expensive properties, they would get that many, you know, lack of a better word, dickheads coming through, just trying to sign them up, and you could literally smell the commission breath running out of their mouth. So the thing when I do it, every time I go to appraise a property, I go in, have a chat to the owners, and just talk to them for the most part. And you know, after five, 10 minutes, I haven't even looked through the property. We've got a good relationship. So then after we've had a laugh, hopefully we've you know, bonded over some mutual friends or mutual interests, something like that. And then I'll just say, hey, do you want to show me around the property? And then by that time, they've forgotten you're even a real estate in there trying to get work, because that's what you do. That's how we make a living, you know? We have to get those listings, but they've forgotten about that. They're walking you around, showing you their property, telling you stories about, like, oh, you know, this is where my daughter grew up, this is where we did this, this is where we did that. And as soon as that happens, then you know you've got an email. Obviously, you know, you need to show some evidence. Um, use your office, use your company. So my company's Realmark. And before I had any listings, you know, the company of Realmark had thousands of listings. So I'll just use that, say, oh yeah, we've sold. Use those types of words. Um, don't limit yourself to just you. Now that I have sold properties, I've sold good things, I have case studies, I go in straight with that. You know, I still do the same thing, talk to them, get them to give me a tour, but then give them evidence of things that I've done. Show them how I can be different, show them how I can market them, you know, their properties on social media, all of that. Things other agents don't do. And just remember, make sure, the property's always the star. Nobody cares about the agent. You're not the superstar because people aren't coming to the house to see you unless you're obviously one of the celebrity property brokers, but that's not me. The house is the star, the house is why you get paid, and the house is the only reason the family's brought you in. And for the next one, the family, the owner. You know, they're going through a stressful time. I don't care what anyone says, anytime you're selling a property, it's a stressful time. Whether you're gonna make $10 million from it, whether you're gonna lose $10 million from it, it's a stressful time. They just wanna know they're in good hands. You're gonna take care of them, and you're gonna do your absolute best to bring them the best price for their property and just to get people through their property because that's what it is. We're here to generate inquiries. Anyone can put a property on the market, um, anyone can put it online, but you've got to actually drive people through. That's my biggest one, just you know, don't be a dickhead. Be a good guy, let them know who you are, be personal with them, and just enjoy the relationship and enjoy the ride. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. I hope this opened your eyes, a little bit of insight into the real estate industry. Be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, updates every single week, and I'm just gonna keep trying to, you know, give my little bit of insights about the real estate injury, try to do it from, you know, as real a perspective as possible, and just grow in this journey with you. Thanks so much, guys. See ya.